You're watching FISM News. I'm Samuel Case, and this is FISM News. In light of America pulling troops from our ally country of Syria, the Turkish military moved in to attack the area. Trump sent a letter to the president of Turkey in attempt to make a deal and stop the fighting. In a press meeting on Thursday, October 17th, U.S. Vice President Mike Pence spoke about the military operation. Let's take a look. One week ago, Turkish forces crossed into Syria. Earlier this week, President Trump took decisive action to call on Turkish forces to stand down, to end the violence, to agree to negotiations. And today, uh, I'm proud to report, thanks to the strong leadership of President Donald Trump and the strong relationship between President Erdogan and Turkey and the United States of America, that today the United States and Turkey have agreed to a ceasefire in Syria. He credited the successful deal to the leadership of President Donald Trump and the good relationship between Turkey and America. This deal gives the Kurds 120 hours to evacuate the northernmost part of Syria, about a 20-mile safe zone. This will leave room for Turkey to take over. This safe zone is something they've been trying to obtain for years. Currently, President Donald Trump is very pleased with how the negotiations have played out this far. This is an amazing outcome. This is an outcome, regardless of how the press would like to damp it down, this was something that they've been trying to get for 10 years. You would have lost millions and millions of lives. They couldn't get it without a little rough love, as I called it. I just put out. They needed a little bit of that at the beginning. But I will tell you, on behalf of the United States, I want to thank Turkey. I want to thank all of the people that have uh, gotten together and made this happen. Chaos has taken over parts of Mexico City since Thursday, October 17th. The son of the notorious drug lord El Chapo was captured, and shortly after he was released. The detainment of Ovidio Guzman Lopez sparked intense gunfire battles between police forces and cartel members. The fighting lasted for hours. In civilian footage, you can see frightened families running and taking cover. Meanwhile, the firing of machine guns echo just behind them. State officials are advising residents to avoid certain parts of the city for their safety. Many are remembering the life of Democratic Congressman Elijah Cummings this week. He passed away on October 17th after years of health challenges. Cummings was the House Representative for Maryland's 7th District, and he was most recently cited as a key figure in President Donald Trump's impeachment inquiry and will be remembered by many as a passionate civil rights leader. Exciting news for Team USA this past Thursday at the Gymnastic World Championships in Stuttgart, Germany. Simone Biles just became the most decorated gymnast in world history. Biles' parents are seen here exchanging a kiss. This sweet ritual is shared by Mr. and Mrs. Biles as a moment of celebration anytime daughter Simone completes a routine. Facebook founder and CEO Mark Zuckerberg spoke at Georgetown University this week. The main point of the speech was to defend the media company's policy about political ads. Recently, he's been getting particular pushback on this policy from Democratic presidential candidate Elizabeth Warren. She's opposed to the fact that the policy leaves political advertisements exempt from fact-checking. In his speech, Zuckerberg countered that accusation by positioning Facebook as a company that wants to uphold free speech. There are many more ads about issues than there are directly about elections. Would we ban ads about health care or immigration or women's empowerment? And if you're not going to ban those, does it really make sense to give everyone else a voice in political debates except for the candidates themselves? Monday marked the fifth day in a string of consecutive strikes in Hong Kong. Demonstrators have been moving quickly between districts. Just as police break up one protest, another begins nearby. In total, 24 people were hospitalized due to Monday's events. Also on Monday, around 2,300 aviation employees joined the strike, causing the cancellation of over 200 flights. In an official response, Hong Kong's leader Carrie Lam held a press conference to call the people to end their side of the violence. However, lawmakers interrupted with protests when she attempted to begin the proceedings. This political unrest in Hong Kong has been escalating since June. The fight for free speech has expanded from Hong Kong to the United States. An emotionally charged controversy between the NBA and China continues unfolding this week, and it all started with a tweet. 
Houston Rockets general manager Daryl Murray tweeted an image that read, quote, fight for freedom, stand with Hong Kong. Murray has since deleted and apologized for this tweet, but the NBA has struggled to respond. In China, there are many NBA fans who feel loyal to Beijing, along with the Communist Party, which pays the NBA to stream their games in China. Back in the United States, the NBA has been attacked by critics for what they say is prioritizing profits over human rights. In the most recent effort to clear the air, NBA chief Adam Silver released a statement which said, quote, it is inevitable that people around the world, including from America and China, will have different viewpoints. It is not the role of the NBA to adjudicate those differences. A recent Moody's analytic model predicts the 2020 presidential election outcome. This model, which looks at the economy during the time of the election, predicts an easy victory for Trump in the 2020 U.S. presidential elections if the economy is good. However, the data also shows that in the end, turnout at the polls will be the greatest determining factor. Two NASA astronauts, Jessica Meir and Christina Cook, made history on Friday, October 18th. The women facilitated the first ever all-female spacewalk to take place outside the International Space Station. In a ceremonious phone call, President Donald Trump called to congratulate the astronauts while they were making their spacewalk. On the call, Christina said, quote, It's an incredible feeling, and she credited the many scientists and astronauts that came before her. Lieutenant Colonel Maggie DeSanti went viral this week for an impressive video of her doing push-ups. The 84-year-old woman challenged a TSA agent to keep up with her and her exercise regime. A bystander got the whole thing on video, and Fox News stated that during the Vietnam War, Maggie, quote, repelled from helicopters to treat wounded soldiers as a U.S. Army nurse. I'm Ian Patrick, and thank you for watching FISM News. Thank you for watching. This has been FISM News.